The nation's long wait for a vaccine is almost over. The Pfizer shot is on the edge of official approval. A panel of government advisors has voted that the vaccine's benefits outweigh risks, moving the U.S. one step closer to emergency use authorization. U.S. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar spoke to ABC's Good Morning America earlier today and said it's all but a done deal. Get more on this now from Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar. Secretary Azar, thank you for joining us again this morning. When will the first American outside of a trial get this vaccine? Well, George, I've got some uh, good news for you here on Good Morning America that uh, uh, just a little bit ago, the FDA informed Pfizer that they do intend to proceed towards an authorization for their vaccine. So in the next couple of days, probably, as we work to negotiate with Pfizer, the information doctors need to prescribe it appropriately, uh, we should be seeing the authorization of this first vaccine. And we'll, as you just said, we will work with Pfizer to get that shipped out. And so we could be seeing people getting vaccinated Monday, Tuesday of next week. Monday, Tuesday of next week. Here to discuss is Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, Carrie Altoff, live from Baltimore. Carrie, we feel so close yet so far away, I think, from official approval and then, of course, eventual distribution of a vaccine for hundreds of millions of Americans. So, so take us through after this emergency use authorization news late yesterday, what continues to be the holdup? So right now, what the FDA is going to do is think about all of the conversation that happened yesterday. It was a rigorous scientific conversation. There were members of the community there voicing their ideas, concerns, and support. The next step is essentially FDA getting in there and saying, okay, here is the way we need to use this vaccine. As you noted, this is emergency use authorization. This is not full licensure. So it is answering this question do the benefits outweigh the risk? And that answer can be different for different groups. So when it came to this panel yesterday, it wasn't unanimous by, by any stretch here. It was actually uh, 17 to four, that was the vote. One absentee, uh, so one person abstained. What's the reasoning behind voting against this? So interestingly, after the meeting, after they held the vote during the meeting, they didn't really have any additional discussion as to why individuals were not voting in favor or why the individual um, decided to abstain from the vote. But they have started to talk to media outlets. And from what I'm hearing, it sounds to me like the, the issue was the 16 and 17 year olds. So in the vaccine trial, there were 163 16 and 17 year olds. And the question mm -hmm. of do the benefits outweigh the risk is a little bit different in that age group because that age group does have a lower risk of severe COVID-19 illness if they become infected. And so that's where some of this abstention was coming from. They wanted more data. So the question is really around whether those young people should actually be vaccinated. That's right. And the FDA is going to is going to wrestle with that today. They have to put together the language for this emergency use, uh, use authorization that says who they believe the vaccine should be used in, who it's authorized to be used in. And as uh, Secretary Azar was saying, the next step then is to put together that doctor's fact sheet to make that even more clear for the clinicians who are out there that will be prescribing it. Now, one issue, of course, is, is, is when it comes to sort of supply of the Pfizer vaccine. Um, as far as, as, as rolling this out to a wider number of, of people and, and, and sort of thinking about the, the general population, what is your timeline now for, for thinking when that will happen? So, you know, I, I think it's very, very exciting that the timeline is going to be, um, you know, really kicking into high gear right now. If this emergency use, use authorization, if it formally happens um, today or sometime early next week, Pfizer has said that they will start shipping within 24 hours. Um, the numbers keep changing a little bit, but it sounds like there are about 6 million doses ready and available. Of course, that means 3 million people will be initially vaccinated because we have to save that second dose for 21 days from now so that those individuals can receive it. As this continues to roll out, of course, Pfizer will be ramping up production. The distribution systems will all be kicking into high gear and the vaccine will widely become available, but it won't be for a few months before it starts re reaching the, the, the big chunks of the population who, who are not at the highest risk for, for COVID-19 infection and severe illness. All of this is, is happening as the U.S. continues to see just staggering grim figures, record number of deaths, hospitalizations continuing to go up. Uh, now that we do get this spate of good news as well, at, at what point do we start to see uh, the inoculation, the vaccination start to offset some of those figures? Because we did hear 
uh, from health official, one health official yesterday uh, that we're still set to see these statistics continue to get worse and worse for at least three more months. That's right. I, the, the death count is, is shocking and it's heartbreaking and nobody wants us to be in this position anymore. And the vaccine is an important tool in that, but it is not an overnight fix for anything right now. So really it's a lot of individual, individual decision-making that is at play right now, especially with the holidays coming. We really do need to be hunkering down at home so that vaccine can get to the healthcare workers and those elderly folks, especially the ones who are living in long care facilities who are just at very high risk of death after COVID infection. What would you say to people right now who may be hesitant to, to think about taking this vaccine because from what they saw, it was rushed through and didn't go through the normal uh, steps that a, a vaccine typically goes through when it does reach the public? So I will say that the process that this vaccine has gone through for emergency use authorization is the same with just a little bit of additional let's read this and, and scrutinize it and think about it as fast as we can. Now, scientists and, and public health practitioners and clinicians, people have been working around the clock reading all of this document and, and digesting what's going on in these different companies in order to produce the vaccine. But I think the best evidence yesterday of the rigor of this process was the amazing conversation that happened during the discussion specifically about the Pfizer vaccine. Next week, we'll probably be hearing similar discussion about the Moderna vaccine. We're hopeful that the FDA will get to that um, point in discussion. So I don't think the scientific rigor has been sacrificed. I think more people have been getting pulled in to really dig into these data in the most expeditious time frame possible, because the fact of the matter is, is we're in a pandemic and we've got to move quickly. As a professor of epidemiology at a school of, of public health, what are your concerns about, about people potentially not taking the vaccine? Well, the vaccine doesn't work. Vaccinations work, right? So you do have to vaccinate individuals in order for the vaccine to provide that protection in the population. And hopefully we'll get high enough levels that even those who, who are not vaccinated can, can get some protection from just the fact that they'll be around other individuals who are, who are vaccinated. You know, there's a lot of messaging that has to go on here. There is a lot of trust that we have to have with the American public. But I will say this, this process that we're going through right now, it is scientific history, but it is not without a lot. I can't even, I don't even know if anyone's estimated the number of scientists who have been involved in this process, eyes all over this data to make sure it is a rigorous process. Associate Professor of Epidemiology at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health, Carrie Altoff, live from Baltimore. Carrie, thanks for your time. Have a great weekend. And we should note that the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health is supported by Michael R. Bloomberg, founder of Bloomberg LP and Bloomberg Philanthropies. The biggest stories, the moment they happen from around the globe. Subscribe to Bloomberg Quick Take now for insight in an instant.